Hi guys, and welcome to another AI video. So what we're going to do here is we're going to model both China's population and India's population over time since 1950, with the goal of finding out when will India's population surpass China's. Because they say, soon actually, soon India will become uh, the country with the highest, the biggest population in the world. So we're going to find out exactly when that is. So what we did, well, sorry, what one of my students did, because he's done this IA before, and I actually have the sample of that IA on my website, and I, I go through it in more detail and explain what he did and didn't do well. But this is how he did it. He got the, the data, um, the population, from or since 1950s, and he got it every five years, 1915, 1955, 1960. He got the data from the World Bank, which is a very, a very reliable source. And um, make sure, obviously, guys, when you're using, when you're collecting data, you get it from a reliable source. And again, guys, when I think this IA is to kind of hopefully give you ideas, don't necessarily do this IA. You don't have to do China and India's population. You can do another two two countries population it doesn't have to be when one will surpass the other it might be when someone's population will reach a certain number or it doesn't even have to be population it could be something that's changing over time um covid cases would be another another example anyway he got it from 1950 then 1955 1960 you can talk about why why choose why did he choose every five years well he had his reasons and he, and he mentioned that in his ia he reflected um, critically reflected on all of this. Also, he got what the data he was given was was actually well, it was very exact. It was here 554,419,275 people in China. Now that's well, firstly, that's probably not perfectly accurate, and um, I didn't want to use uh, I didn't want to use so many significant figures. So what I did is. Um, I changed, instead of putting the years, because the x-axis is going to be time, so I don't actually want the year uh, on the axis, because my functions will have like crazy big numbers in them. So what I actually did is I changed the x-axis to years since 1950. So 1950 would be zero, because obviously that's zero years since 1950, and 2020 would be 70, because that's 70 years since 1950. And then I changed the population into millions and I rounded it to three significant figures. So instead of this big, big number, I just have 554 and then it says, uh, or well, you can title or label the axis, the, the y axis as population in millions. Okay, so now we have this nicely. I'm going to use um, GeoGebra. So I'm going to copy this. Well, first, let me show you GeoGebra. So here's GeoGebra.org the world's favorite online calculator, I think that says. So when you go to this, guys, click here and go to GeoGebra Classic. Now, in GeoGebra Classic, we can add a spreadsheet, like so. And in this spreadsheet, I can get my data here, copy it. I think actually just Control or Command C and Command V works pretty nicely and then I'll go back here and get well I'll just do this separately guys because I want this here and I want India's population here like this okay um, now what I'm gonna do guys is highlight this right click you may have seen me do this in other videos Right click, create list of points. Now this has created a list of points. Um, you can't see them because the first one's gonna be at 554, but if you zoom out enough, you'll see the points like this. And then I'm gonna do it again for, so that's China's population. This is India's population. Create list of points, so I get more points here. Now obviously guys, the scale here is bad, very bad, so I'm gonna, uh, if I right click, well, just make sure you click um, anywhere here first and then right click and then zoom. Now you can change the zoom using any of these here 
or even if you go here you can literally type in what numbers you want it to see but I often try just zoom to fit that's not too bad um, maybe let's try let's try this to be slightly different I don't know one two well maybe that's a little bit better um, okay let's just leave it like that for now so this is China's population and this is India's population. Now you can see just from looking at the scatter graph, you can see that India, yeah, look, it's gonna it's gonna pass it out. When exactly? Well, let's find out. So I'm going to I actually don't need the spreadsheet anymore, guys. So I'm just gonna open the algebra calculator here. So here I have L1 and L2. L1 is my points, this is my list of points for China, L2 is my list of points for India. Okay, now, one of the nice things about this type of IA, guys, is there's very there's a very easy and nice opportunity to reflect, because what we can do is try one model, reflect on it, look at it, and perhaps think, well, hang on, could we make, the, what's wrong with this model? Could we make it better? Why isn't it good? Etc. Etc. So let's start with just a linear model. Assume, let's assume that these populations are both um, increasing linearly. So imagine this was a straight line, a line of best fit. So I can click, well, if I type fit down here, it gives me a choice of which, which uh, functions to choose. If I do line, fit line list of points and I press L1. That is the best fit line of um, through China's data points. So there you have it. Is it a perfect fit? No. And again, you can talk about all that. Press enter. Um, let's do fit again line for L2. Press enter. Now guys, I think I would like to maybe, if I do settings, I can change the color. Let's change the color of this, I don't know, to pink. And let's change the color of this to green. Okay, close that. Now, we can see that if these two models were, were perfect, they would meet here. And where they meet is where India's population will surpass China's. So I can actually find that from if I click here intersection and actually just click the two this and this it gives me the point of intersection which is there and that point g1 is 161 so that means it will happen 161 years after um, 1950 and you can do the math exactly when that would be well it would be um, 2050 2111 sometime in there and you can actually guys find the t exact time when it will happen but again you can reflect on why that's probably not um, perfect but anyway imagine these two lines were well imagine we get these two lines we can then stop and reflect look and say right fine that's our first guess but these these clearly are both not good models because we can see towards the end here it's not a straight line, and this is not a straight line. This this one, the growth rate is definitely slowing down for China. And again, guys, you can talk about why that might be the case. Um, and India's, well, it's just not doing that either. So, not a perfect, not a perfect um, model. But as I say again, that's fine because we can we can reflect on that. So I'm just gonna if I click this, guys, I can actually just remove these lines. Now you could take a screenshot, guys. I don't know why H1 is there. Let's remove that too. Um, you can, you can, guys, sorry, hang on, click this. Okay. Yeah, take screenshots of those lines and put them into your IA. Okay, next thing we'll try something else so maybe you can say population grows exponentially so we can try an exponential fit I'll just do these ones quickly guys exponential l1 okay that's china's now that's definitely not a good fit again we talk about that why that's the case and then fit um, exponential l2 that's definitely not a good well actually that's be definitely better than china's one but 
um, that there's problems with it. But again, we could find the intersecting point, intersection, this and this, and that's probably a more realistic time that it's going to happen than the other one. Um, but again, reflect, we'll talk about why it's not a good fit. Now, guys, as well as just looking at it, you want to you want to actually quantify how good the fit is. And one of the ways to do that is using the or squared value. So calculate the or squared value for these as well. Um, okay, and then, guys, maybe you can say, well, this one isn't. This one isn't. Um, Hang on, I need to remove that point. Let's just delete this. You can say China's, the, its growth rate, as I said, is slowing down. So maybe you want a polynomial. So fit, fit poly here, fit poly. Now we need a list of points and the degree. So if I do L1, oops. So if I do L1, here and the degree two okay so I get that for China I don't know maybe let's make it three something like that and then I can do the fit for India fit poly again L2 no that's not what I wanted to do um, hang on let's go back here L2 and the degree two maybe three. Again, you can talk about things like that. That's maybe looks, that's actually a pretty nice fit. Or finally, what you can do, guys, is, and those of you who are always asking me for HL, for HL maths, is the logistic function. And the logistic function is very good for modeling population because it's that S curve where it starts off the growth rate is is very high so it starts growing the population starts growing rapidly but then it starts to slow down because it, it can i don't know a country can only take so many people so if you do fit logistic l1 that's a nice fit isn't it for china's population because it was growing very quickly here and then i don't know at this certain time and guys you can find points of inflection here um, and you can find the limit if you're doing HL or even you can even do it for SL. But there's a lot of interesting things you can find with this logistic function. So for some reason around here, this point of inflection, it started to slow down. The growth started to slow down. So I'll just do that. And let's do the same for fit logistic, fit logistic list of points L2. And there I have it. That is for India. So these, yeah, these two are probably my best my best functions. But again, you can kind of go through a few of them, reflect on them until you get to your logistic function. Say, right, this is very nice. So then we go to our, and uh, let's do our intersection here and here. And this point, is that an L1 or an I1 is I1 is 73.31. So this actually suggests that it's going to happen 73 years after 1950, which is actually 2023. So as I record, I'm recording this video in 2022, so it would actually be next year. So it'd be interesting to see if that if that happens. I, I don't think that seems like a reasonable, um, that seems like a reasonable estimate. Um, anyway, there you go, guys. That's basically um, all I wanted to talk about. Remember when you're doing a modeling IA, guys, to, to talk about how good the fit of the function is that's very very important um and yeah that's it so guys you can you can try an a similar similar to this as i said it certainly doesn't have to be china or or india and it doesn't even have to be population but something and uh, when you get points like this have time on the x-axis and whatever it happens to be, number of cases, population on the y-axis, and then you can find a model and make predictions. Obviously, always talk about, this is critical reflection, talk about what's wrong with the model. Like, of course, that's not going to be perfect. There's lots of things wrong with it, but um, that's the best we've got. Okay, that's it, guys. I'm done. If you find this useful, please like and subscribe. Check out my website in the link below, and I'll see you in the next video.